Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today we're going to be listening to Leprous for the first time on this channel, though I admit that I had a tiny sneak peek. A while back I was taking a long road trip, and I asked the patrons to put together a playlist for that. The singer that stood out the most to me on that playlist was Einar, the lead singer of Leprous. So we're going to be checking him out in a live performance from Rockefeller Hall today, and they'll be performing Slave. Let's get to it. This, ooh, he's about to sing. This continued pitch bend up, this like half step that's going up there, and this synth that is, that's, uh, it almost sounds like an organ with like some really high frequency on top. This all feels like this like distorted end of days kind of setting. Uh, let's, let's, uh, hear some minor though. I could listen to his voice all day. It has, I might feel emotionally exhausted though, if it was all day of him singing. It has so much emotion. It's just so much raw emotion coming forth in his voice. It reminds me a little bit of Lara Fabian, just the way it pours out. His voice, it doesn't, some voices can hide emotion. And some voices just drip with it. And his is like the drippy emotion kind of voice. It doesn't sound like he um, has any affectations. It just sounds completely like him. Uh, and that I love the way that he is playing around in his breaks so much. You guys know, probably from watching other videos, that I really like yodeling because I'm fascinated by how quickly people will go back and forth between their break and use it to, to make jumps. And he does the same thing, but he somehow just makes it like ethereal and pretty when he goes up to the top. So when he flips up to his falsetto, you hear like the voice, it just keeps going out of the top of his head in the placement. And it sounds so gorgeous and weepy and, uh, and full of pain all at the same time. I love, love, love it. <sighs>
uh, this is the first time I realized that there are actually two drummers on stage. That's awesome. That has to be so in sync. Whoa, that's really, really cool. Um, I was really surprised when I heard that extra grit come into his voice there. It was, it sounds so tormented. And then he goes up into the top and it has that weepy sound up there. I, I'm just loving, loving, loving all of the colors and emotion in his voice. Uh, in addition, I love the way that sometimes he uses his vibrato. It's, it's in a very unexpected and I would say a very unclassical way. Actually, he'll push into his vibrato just a little bit and it'll suddenly speed up at the end. Usually if you have like a really relaxed, even sound, you, you see this like very uh, even kind of vibrato, but with him, he will push into it to actually increase the, the rate of that vibrato and that makes it feel more angsty. I love the way he's using that. I think that might just be natural to him. I don't know if he's being really specific. It seems like a natural sort of expression, one that maybe he doesn't necessarily or didn't practice to uh, be able to do something that just was inherent in his voice. <sighs> Okay, let's go back a little bit. I want to hear that gritty part one more time. Yep. It's, it's, I think he's saying slave there. That makes sense for the grit. Wow. And he has such a clean sound normally up there, right? He's got one of those voices it's able to have that total laser and he has like some really nice backspace too and like the he has the resonance as well but he's able to go super laser or or add that grit so he can have the clean or the dirty side of singing very very easily oh no a little bit more Another thing that I'm also loving about this song, I didn't even notice it at first, but it, the instruments are more, the, the instruments that have notes have more space for his voice. So he actually is singing a lot of this without like that instrument helping him tune the pitch. He's just like got a bedding of instruments below and above. And then his voice is able to really come cleanly through the middle and he tunes very, very well as well. I think we're going to go into like a more instrumental section here. Uh, I'm just listening to these, these words now, make your move. Um, you lie there silent cloud of, I think cloud of dust was another word in there. Uh, wow. It is this song evokes a ton of emotions too. It's interesting because you don't hear a ton of movement yet. I think we're probably going to get into a section with more movement just by what that transitional material felt like, but it felt like it had that stagnance in the music, but you could feel the voice with the emotion ranging throughout. Wow. Yeah. I think that his voice for me has some of the most emotional content that I've heard in a male's voice. I think it's just really extraordinary transition.
He did screaming. Wait, but it sounded, that sounded like different than other screams I've heard before. I'm gonna go back and catch that, that fascinating. Almost pretty. Like it's <laughs> so funny. So much of screaming right here. It's got like this like terrifying edge, and this did have a, it had a little terrifying edge to it. But his, uh, I think, because of the high pitch, and because he, it, it sounds very clear. Like he's using his false folds in that mix. Um, it's uh, it has like a lot of resonance behind it. it. Doesn't feel like as snarly as a lot of different screams that I've heard. Uh, that's that's sort of amazing. He has the prettiest scream that I think I've heard so far. Let's go back and listen to it some more. I like his scream. But sometimes screaming, I feel like it, it can just get to me if it's been happening for a really, really, really long time. So I've been exploring like death metal and black metal some more. And after a while that screaming can feel like it's a lot that's happening. You feel pretty jarred afterwards. His screaming feels, uh, it feels pained, but at the same time it feels hollow and heartfelt. Sure, are words I would not necessarily, I guess hollow might be a word that would come up and scream more often about heartfelt, uh, maybe like really pained for sure. And it feels pained as well, but a very, very interesting tone quality to hear in a scream. One more time, just the end of that. lovable. I, I love the breaks that he leans into there, the way he, uh, the little cries essentially that he adds to it. He's going over a large range as well, that it doesn't ever sound like when he shifts registers that it isn't the same voice. So he's got that register unification happening. And he also has really clear, uh, clear words at the same time while pouring forth a ton of emotion. Wow. Okay, so right there, when he went into it, you could hear there's like a little catch in his throat uh, and cloud of dust, I think are the words. 
Um, and there was this little, little extra catch as he tried to onset the top one. But, but uh, normally that kind of thing, someone would say like, oh, that's not perfect. You know, what a shame that vocally could have been technically so much better. Here, it sounded like an emotional catch. And those are the things that I love about live performances, especially live opera performances. I love it when I hear those little catches in a singer's voice because that means that they're riding the edge of the emotion. Listen to it here. Right there, oh! You hear it catch at the end? Oh, I love that. he ornamented that by stepping up was just beautiful. Again, it sounds like this weeping up. Uh, I'm also, when I'm trying to like analyze technically, what is it that he's doing that makes it so amazing emotionally too? Uh, and it's so hard to put your finger on it. All the main things that I know is that he's not affecting his voice to sound like anybody else's. It is just exclusively, uniquely his sound, which is fantastic. Um, you really hear he's able to come together cleanly in the chords as well, or uh, obviously add some grit or scream. But uh, in addition, one of the, it's an angular melody. It's like jumping up and down quite a bit. He continues to have a legato sound the whole time. So he's continuing to phonate. So it feels like the words are connected. And I feel like that, that also comes not just from continuing to phonate, but from a connection that's, that's down and more in a person's gut or like in like the core or your soul. You feel it just streaming from that, helping it connect and be sung the whole time rather than feeling as angular. Ooh, let's go back and catch a little bit more of that so you can hear it. Yeah. That ending caught me a little bit off guard. It does continue after, but it's just like a fade out kind of thing. I think it's the end of intermission or the end of the concert for them. So uh, I cut it off a little bit after where I think the official song ended. Now, quick recap of everything here and overall impression. Listening to Einar is like a spiritual journey. I love the way that you hear his emotion just cleanly, clearly, sometimes with grit, in every single register of his voice. He is the definition of a charismatic voice. He doesn't have any sort of gunk in the way of his original sound or anything getting in the way of him sharing his message. And I, he's saying the same melody over and over, but every single time it got me, I loved it so much. Thank you so much to the patrons, uh, patrons that helped to make this playlist. And thank you for recommending Leprous. I would love to hear more recommendations down below this video. And please, everyone, feel free to come and join the Patreon. I do have a playlist um, that we're going to be sending out soon for the next road trip. So you could get some songs on there for me to listen to and check out, maybe discover a new amazing voice. Also, I have premieres here every Monday. Tuesday and Friday at 8 a.m. Arizona time on YouTube. There is a chat room and I love it if you would come and say hello. So I'll hope to see you somewhere else soon. Thanks.